Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to the panel, I heard your testimony. I had to step out for much of the Q&A, so I may be plowing some old ground here, so I, I, I apologize about that. Um, not unlike many other members, I've heard from a number of financial institutions in my state and in my district, particularly in dealing with the small financial institution exclusion. Uh, I've heard from the first financial bank in Hereford, Texas, and they tell me economic forces is going to force our institution to adopt the same price level as the large institutions. And since the proposal doesn't permit our bank to cover the cost of providing debit card transactions, we will be forced to implement new service charges and other fees on checking accounts. I hear from First State Bank of Athens, Texas, who say that the formula applied to their bank, quote, the resulting revenues would not even cover switch and transaction costs, much less costs to issue the cards, administer them, and cover fraud losses. I heard from Austin Bank, also in my district, quote, we expect a 70 percent reduction in our interchange fees, which will reduce our income by 14.74 percent. If net income is reduced, so is our capital growth. That leads to less lending by banks. So, Mr. Uh, Kemper, you're representing a number of the banks here today. Why aren't these small financial institutions convinced that they're going to be protected, and they certainly don't seem to believe the consumer is going to be protected? Well, I, I, I mentioned in my um, opening remarks, and I think Mr. Michaels mentioned it too, that uh, whenever you've got a low-cost alternative, they're going to take market share. And I think that's why the small banks don't think the exemption will work or why Chairman Bernanke commented on that this morning. Uh, so I think, I think that this will hasten the consolidation in the industry and that the community banks are most at risk. And we see this all the time. I, I said we're a Main uh, Street bank. We have banks in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, Hannibal, Missouri, Peoria, Illinois. Our profitability uh, relates directly to how big the community is. The smaller the community, the less profitable it is. It's a simpler kind of model, a community bank model. Mm -hmm. They're much more dependent on this kind of uh, payment stream. So they're going to suffer proportionally more because they're not in other businesses. Uh, Mr. Seltzer, in your testimony, you said there was a, quote, uh, lack of properly functioning market mechanism, speaking of the payment card network. Do you view there to be a legal barrier to entry in the payment card network market? By that I meant that we've never seen another product like this. Well, no, I'm just asking the question. Does your firm believe there is a legal barrier to entry into this market? Yes, no, maybe? No, there's a practical barrier. Okay, a practical barrier. Okay, a practical barrier. Um, do you view it as a natural monopoly? Don't have an opinion on the, on, on the matter? Okay. No, no. We, we now have a rule, okay, so if we don't necessarily have a natural monopoly, if we don't have legal barriers to entry, I'm not totally unsympathetic here. I, I, I take you at your word, at your testimony. It's a very high cost for you. I understand that, but I happen to patronize one of your establishments in Lakewood, Texas. I've got two small children. They're thirsty. They drink a lot of milk. So my first question is, we hear to some extent about the benefits that can be derived here. If Congress does not act to delay this for further study, uh, when, the, when, this, uh, when the Federal Reserve rule is implemented, if I go to the 7-Eleven in Lakewood, Texas, in the Lakewood neighborhood of Dallas, Texas, can I expect a gallon of milk to drop in price? Can I expect a gallon of gas to drop in price? Is the DVD from the little red box machine you have in front of your store, is that going to drop in price? You know, I think when this goes forward, you're going to see competition in every, every retail merchant. We compete every day on gas prices. So you mentioned gas prices. So my competitor across the street drops So maybe, price maybe not. Any. I've either, gonna, I've either got to okay. drop the price or I've got to lose volume. And I, I expect you don't know the answer to the question, but I want to make a point here. The question is, do you know what the incremental cost is of producing a Slurpee? Yes. 
What is it? Company we do. I don't know. I don't know specifically as a person. Well, I just wonder how 7-Eleven would feel if the Federal Reserve came in with a rule that said you can only recover the incremental cost of selling a Slurpee. My guess is the ice and the fruit flavor don't cost a whole lot, but you got a lot of fixed costs. You got. I see my time has expired, but I think you get the point. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Well. 